The following is a class on Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter number 7, text number 28, given by His Grace Sriman Sankarshan Dasatkikari, recorded on May 15th, 2008, in Sofia, Bulgaria. So, tonight we're going to read the most powerful book on self realization that's available in the world. It's called Bhagavad Gita as it is. By His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Di Dandi Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada. Tonight, yes. Tonight we will read from the chapter number 7, text number 28. To begin this Reading, we will first of all chant a very, very powerful mantra. I want you all to re- join with me. I will say it and then you can repeat it back to me. Meditate very, very deeply on this mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Yesham Tvantagatam Papam Jananam Punya Karmanam Te Dvandva Mohanir Mukta Bhajante Mangdridha Vrata Persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life and whose sinful actions are completely eradicated are freed from the dualities of illusion and they engage themselves in my service with determination. Those eligible for elevation to the transcendental position are mentioned in this verse. For those who are sinful, atheistic, foolish, and deceitful, it is very difficult to transcend the duality of desire and hate. Only those who have passed their lives in practicing the regulative principles of religion, who have acted piously and who have conquered the the, the sinful reactions, can accept devotional service and gradually rise to the pure knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then gradually they can meditate in trance on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the process of being situated on the spiritual platform. This elevation is possible in Krishna consciousness by the association of pure devotees. For in the association of great devotees, one can be delivered from delusion. It is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam 552, that if one actually wants to be liberated, he must render service to the devotees. Mahatsevam dvaram mahor vimukte. But one who associates with the materialistic people is on the path leading to the darkest region of the existence. Tamo dvaram joshitam sangi sangam. All the devotees of the Lord traverse this earth just to recover the conditioned souls from their delusion. The impersonalists do not know that forgetting their constitutional position as subordinate to the Supreme Lord is the greatest violation of God's law. Unless one is reinstated in his own constitutional position, it is not possible to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead or to be fully engaged in his transcendental loving service with determination. Mande Shri Guru Shri 
Parakamala Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Raghunatam Saitam Prijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam So, the key to achieving the perfection of existence is to associate with those who will become perfect. It's like if you want to play guitar, you associate with guitar players. If you want to be a, a very expert cook, you join a cooking club. So, if you want to achieve <coughs> the highest perfection of existence, then you should associate with persons who have made their existence perfect. And by their association, you will become perfect. So, one may ask, why, what is this thing called perfection and why would I want it? I mean, is it, will I have more money? You may have more money, you may not have more money, that's not the point. Whatever money we have, it is, we can never keep it forever anyway. When we are born, we don't have a bank account. When we leave our body, we cannot take our bank account with us. So, material advancement, although necessary for paying our rent, is not going to make us happy. If you want actual happiness, you must realize what is the self. We discussed this in detail last night. That we must understand I am not this body. That I am a spiritual being instead. You see, the material self is subject to temporality, ignorance, and misery. And the spiritual self, the actual self, is eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. So, you have your choice. 
Do you want to exist temporarily and suffer and be ignorant? Or would you prefer a permanent existence full of bliss and knowledge? In the modern day society, they do not educate us about this difference. They don't tell us we have a choice. They just say you have to go to school so you can get a good education, so you can get a good job, so you can make money. As if money could buy happiness. But you know what money really buys? Misery. <clears throat> I'm, I come from the United States of America where they have so much money, but they're so miserable people over there. Actual happiness comes when you realize that you're not your body, but you're an eternal spiritual being, servant of God. If you realize this simple truth, you will feel unlimited happiness within your heart. Doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor, or you're young or old, you're ugly or beautiful, it doesn't matter. If you realize I'm not this body, but I'm the eternal servant of God, a spiritual being, then you will have unlimited happiness. So, we have come here to teach you how you can achieve this state of happiness. It is called Krishna consciousness. Or you could call it Christ consciousness, Jehovah consciousness, the same thing, God consciousness. We like to call, use the name Krishna for God because Krishna is a Sanskrit word which has a very, very special meaning. I mean, we could say God consciousness, you know. But Krishna tells us a lot, the word Krishna tells us a lot of information about God. Just like in the U.S., we have a president, you see. Well, not, or they have a president. I'm not really an American anymore in consciousness. They have a president in the U.S. And if he, they call him Mr. President. You can say, well, he's the, he's the president. He's in charge of the country, the president. Well, what do you know about him? Well, I know he's the president. You see, that's not complete knowledge. But if you know, well, his name is Mr. Obama and he grew up in Hawaii and he knew, you know, different things. He has a friend who was, whose sister is a Hare Krishna devotee. And, you know, if you knew these things, then you would have more knowledge. You would, if you just know him as Mr. President, then you have only a little bit of knowledge. But if you know what his name is, you know where he went to school, you know who's that his, his, um, his friend's sister is a Hare Krishna devotee, then you know more about him, you see. So if you simply know God, that's very good. But if you know what his name is, and you know where he lives, and you know who his associates are, then you have much more information about God. 
как се казва, къде живее и кои са неговите приятели, тогава имаха много повече знания за Бога. So the Bible and the Quran, they only give introductory knowledge about God. But the Vedic wisdom, especially Bhagavad Gita, gives very, very detailed knowledge about God. His name, his address, everything. So the better you know God, the easier it is to love him, you see. Just like you may try to feel love for a stranger, but it's a little more difficult. You see. But your intimate family member, you have very deep affection for that person, you see. The more you know somebody, the more you can love them. It's a natural thing. It's like I feel like those of you are here. Now some of you, I'm seeing you for two nights in a row. I feel something more for you because I know you from last night. Now I know you from tonight also, you see. So I'm feeling something more. The more I see you, the more I feel something for you. It's a natural thing. So the same way with God. The more you can know about God, the more you become familiar with his name, his activities, his place of ex- his, his home, his associates, what he likes, what he doesn't like, the more you know, the more you can love him. And as we discussed last night, this is how we perfect our existence. By developing love for God, Krishna. You may say, well, why would that be the reason? Why would that make us happy and make us perfect? The answer is very simple. To answer this question, I would like to ask you a question. Do you know why you exist? Did you just pop out of the air or, you know, why are you here? Now you may say because my parents wanted to have a baby. But that only explains the existence of your body. It doesn't explain the existence of your soul. The soul is not created at the time the body is created. The soul has always existed. Long before the Bulgaria came into existence, your soul was existing. So that means you're not a Bulgarian. So for what purpose has your soul existed for millions of years? That we learn from the Vedas. That the Supreme Soul, or God, manifests from Himself millions of souls to have loving relationships with each and every one of them. That's why you exist. In other words, you have the most glorious reason to exist. You exist for the purpose of having a loving relationship with God, Krishna. The only reason we ever feel miserable is we forgot to love Krishna or God. 
We drifted away from our reason for existence. But if we will come back to our original purpose for existence, if we come back to our original purpose of existence, to have a loving relationship with God, Krishna, then automatically you become peaceful, you become happy, you become full of knowledge, nothing can disturb you. You become fully satisfied. It doesn't cost any money. It's simply a matter of flipping on a little switch inside your heart. Did you know that you have a switch inside your heart? It's like when the room is dark, you flip on the switch and the light comes on. So you have a switch in your heart. And what happens? How do you get it flipped on? That is flipped on. The spirit, by associating with a bona fide spiritual master, he will flip your switch on for you. By associating with advanced devotees of Krishna, they will flip the switch on in your heart. And it's up to you whether you want to leave it on or you want to turn it off. But when you associate with the, with the devotees of the Lord, with an open mind, with an open heart, you will feel how your consciousness is being turned on. And if you like that feeling, then you can keep it on. All you have to do is chant the holy names of God every day. You can chant the names of God according to your own religion. If you're a Christian, you can chant the name of Christ. If you're a Muslim, you can chant Allah. If you have no particular chant that you would like to do, then we invite you to chant this chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is the most recommended chant given in the scriptures. Because this chant will keep your spiritual consciousness turned on 24 hours a day. Whenever you feel yourself slipping back into darkness, all you have to do is start chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Simply one has to chant. Turn your home into a place of spiritual advancement. Just like here, there are pictures of Krishna everywhere. You make your home like this, you see. And everybody here likes to eat. Everyone here eats. Yeah. You all are eaters. Yeah. So when you eat, you take some vegetarian food and you offer that food to God before you eat it. God doesn't eat meat. He's a vegetarian. So you take your vegetarian food, fruits, vegetables, dairy products and grains, and you offer that to God, to Krishna or God, before you eat. 
you make a prayer, you say, my dear Lord, please accept this offering unto you, this loving offering unto you. This is for your pleasure, my Lord. Now you eat this food. And then by, so by this eating, you will also keep your spiritual consciousness turned on. So this is called controlling the tongue. The tongue has two purposes, to eat and to talk. So if you will only eat food which has been offered to God and you will always chant His name, then you will become enlightened very quickly. And you'll become like a Buddha, enlightened, an enlightened being, you see. Simply by eating the remnants of food offered to the, go- to the Lord, this is called Krishna Prasadam. <clears throat> so, this is the secret wisdom of the Vedas which we revealed to you tonight. If you will seriously practice these things, I guarantee you, you'll become the most happy person. And if you don't, I'll give you 10,000 euros cash. (laughs) This process works. If you will follow our instructions, we guarantee you'll become the happiest person. Or you get 10,000 euros cash. So either way, you're going to come out ahead. You'll, be, you'll have experience a happiness which is worth trillions of euros. Or you'll have 10,000 euros in your pocket. You see. Either way, you're a winner. You so we encourage you to try chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, and eating the food which you've offered to God before eating. This, this is the simple formula. How many of you would like to take up my challenge? Raise your hand if you'd like to take up my challenge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. Those of you who are not quite ready yet, that's okay. We're happy that you're here. At least you get something to think about tonight. We'll give you something new to think about. All right, now, so are there any questions? Can we uh, say that all religious religions, they have one goal? Yeah, there's only one God, yes. Goal. Goal. Yes, Yes, we have one, there is one goal, and that's to become a pure lover of God, yes. Krishna consciousness, uh, we pray to serve Krishna. But uh, as far as uh, she knows from Christianity, there you pray that God serves you. So why is that different? Why is it different? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Actually, that is a pollution of Christian philosophy. 
Christ actually teaches to be a servant of God. He says, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. The Christian people have distorted the original pure teaching of Jesus. Christianity actually is the same thing as pure Christianity is the same thing as Krishna consciousness. But we have today an impure version of Christianity. Where instead of trying to serve God, they want God to serve them. A person who is spiritually perfect is purely selfless. They are 100% absorbed in certain... Oh, go ahead. They are 100% absorbed in serving God. If my interest is to engage God in serving me, then I'm still a self-centered person, you see. I haven't given up my egotism. I think that I'm so great that God should serve me. But Christ said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. A meek, humble person, he doesn't think, Oh God, I want you to do this for me, and that for me, and this for me, and that for me. No, he thinks, What can I do for you, my Lord? So pure Christianity and Krishna consciousness are the same thing. But what's being taught now in the name of Christianity is not the original pure Christianity taught by Lord Jesus. They have changed it. We have not changed what Krishna says. We keep it pure. But they have changed what Christ taught. They have polluted it. Next question. Because you said that uh, doesn't matter if we are young or old or beautiful or ugly. Uh, she says that from another point of view, it is not by chance that we are all different. And in her case, she has got some beauty. So this is a uh, like a challenge for her to learn how to not to abuse this beauty, but to use it in a yeah. in proper way. That's right. Yeah, that's why you need to be guided, guided by a bona fide spiritual master. Because if you abuse the God, the gifts that God has given you, then you will lose those gifts. You see. But if you use those gifts very nicely in His service, then He will give you more gifts. So whatever one opulence you may have, beauty, wealth, fame, power, knowledge, whatever opulence one may have, they should utilize that in God's service. You see. 
Then you become more beautiful, more wealthy, more famous, more powerful. She says that this is um, somehow a um, like trial for a person, for example, to be beautiful. It's like a challenge for him. Huh? It's, it's like a, uh, for example, to be beautiful in her case, it's like a trial, like a challenge for her. It's like a test. Yes, you can use... It is a challenge. It's a test. That, all right, God has made you a beautiful woman. Now, what will you do with that beauty? Will you use it simply for attracting men or will you use it to serve the Lord? You see? How do we how do we know that God is a vegetarian? How do we know that uh, God is uh, a vegetarian who doesn't eat meat? How do we know that? Yes, <clears throat> because that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says um, that uh, whatever you eat, you should first offer it to me. And here's what you should eat. He says, Patram Pushpam Palam Payam Yogi Bhakta Payachati. So he mentions foods from the category of fruits, vegetables, dairy products, and grain. Plus, we have uh, God Himself appeared on this planet 5,000 years ago as Krishna. We have detailed descriptions of where He lived, how He dressed, who His friends were, what He ate, everything. In fact, there is one something. In fact, there is one song called Boga Arati by a great sage named Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And he gives a list of every, of a big feast that Krishna had. He gives a, everything and every preparation on the menu is listed in detail. Luchi chini sar puli ladu rasavali. In this way, all the items of the feast are listed. The whole menu is listed. That's how detailed our teachings are. The whole menu of Krishna's feast is listed. There are many, many preps on the... Uh, there's a huge feast. Many, many, many different preps. How many preps were there in that feast, David? Like 20 or 30 preparations. Huh? More than that. It's a huge song called Voga Arati. Voga means the eating, you see. So it's a beautiful song. It gives, a, gives the whole menu of Krishna's feast. There's not one meat item on the whole menu. There's no hamburger, no fried chicken... Nothing like meat, you see. Just there's so many different types of cakes and sweets and vegetables and fruits. So nice. So then, uh, what about this uh, place? In, what about these places in the Bible where uh, there is? Uh, Description of uh, sacrifices, animal sacrifices, and then also the fish in the New Testament. Mm, yes. Yeah. Actually, uh, if, if you are in a desert and there's nothing else to eat, and the only way you can live is to eat some meat, then it is okay. Mm. 
It's like when Christ fed the fish, they were in the desert, there was nothing else to eat. There was no grocery store. There was no fields with crops. They were way out in the desert. Yeah. So in our religion also, if you're in the desert and you're starving to death, you can eat a fish, it's okay. But that is only under emergency conditions. You can even eat human flesh if you have to to survive. Just like if you're in an airplane crash on a mountain and there's no food and there's some dead passengers there, you could eat their flesh to survive. It's okay. But that is under emergency conditions only. Why would you want to torture a poor animal by killing it and eating it, you see? Are they not your brothers and sisters also? But uh, we are actually not torturing, we just buying from the shop. So, yeah. yeah, but the, when you buy from the shop, you're paying them to kill the animal on your behalf. That means you're an accomplice to the murder. So better to give up that bad habit. The body, your body becomes a graveyard. Your belly, don't make your belly into a graveyard. So, any other questions? Yeah. He's reading a book from uh, Deepak Chopra, and there he read that uh, every soul actually can choose what kind of body, what kind of life. So, and uh, the lady is asking, uh, is it is it true that actually the children they can choose um, the parents? What's the criteria of choosing a body and a life? Everything is is well is according to your consciousness. It is not exactly that you get what you want, you get what you deserve. You you can determine what sort of parents you will get, what sort of country you'll be born in. Yes, you can determine it, but it's not just by your desire, it's by your qualifications. Just like in your previous lifetime, if whatever money you had, you utilized it very nicely in the service of God, you see. Then you're qualified in your next life to be a wealthy man, you see. So, according to your qualification, yes, you do determine your future birth, that's a thing. But it's not that you can just desire something and not without the qualification and get you won't get it. You have to qualify, you have to be qualified also. Just like I gave the example last night, when I was a university student, one of the boys in our dormitory, we used to call him the bear. Uh, 
Because when, so when he finished his last class on Friday afternoon, he would go to sleep and he wouldn't get up for 24 hours. He put a do not disturb sign on his dormitory room and he would just go to sleep as long as possible. He loved that sleep. Sweet sleep. So he's qualifying to become a bear in his next life, you see. Because a bear, he can hibernate in the snow for many months, you see. Do you want to say that the animals also have a soul like us? Yes, yes. Or a yes. lower level or like us? Well, Yes and no. Now I'll explain why. Mm. Every single living entity has the same type of soul, but the difference is, in that particular body, their soul is more covered by ignorance. In other words, you were an animal in a previous life. You were an animal in a previous lifetime. Yes. But you were more covered in that birth. Now as a human being, you're more un- your consciousness is more uncovered. I'm not picking on you, all, the truth of all of us. Not just you, but every one of us have been animals before. I was also an animal. That means there is an evolution in the development. Yes, there is an evolution through the cycle of birth and death. There is an evolution. You come up from the lower species to gradually become a human being. Darwin was fifty percent correct. Fifty percent. Huh? Why only fifty percent? Yes, because he, Darwin says that the the actual physical forms are evolving. But we have evidence from the Vedas that actually that's not true. Darwin was wrong on that point. We have evidence from the Vedas to prove that all the forms existed from the very beginning of the universe. But through the cycle of birth and death, the the living being evolves from lower forms to higher forms. The concept of evolution was already there in the Vedas thousands of years ago. Darwin took it and then made his own twist to it. So Darwin was 50% correct and 50% wrong. We have evolved from lower forms to higher forms. That's the Through the cycle of birth and death. You had a question? Извинявай, 
Ама това е въпрос, свързан с кармата. Когато ние сме били съществували в животинско тяло и ако ние сме убити насилствено по подобен начин, за да бъдем изядени, нали, по закона на карма, той, което причиниш на друго живо същество, съответно в следващ момент ти се връща. Да. Точно това е се връща. Дали е така? Так ми. Whatever goes around comes around. If you if you kill an animal to eat it, if you kill an animal to eat it, then you become an animal, and then animal become a human being, and he will kill you and eat you. That's right. It's confirmed in the Bible also. The Bible says, the Bible says, as you sow, so so you reap. So this lady here has a question. It said that uh, on a higher level, our destiny is uh, already predestined. So, the what? On a higher level, uh, our destiny is already uh, predestined. So, can we change our destiny? Yes. <clears throat> As long as you remain on the material platform, you are caught up in destiny. But if you want to get out of your predestined suffering and enjoyment of this world, if you will surrender to God, then you take control of your destiny at that point. According to according to your karma, everything is predestined. You have no choice. But if you want to, you can get out of the karma chakra. If you will chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. By that chanting, you'll be liberated from karma. So by reading Bhagavad Gita and chanting Hare Krishna, you will come free from your karma, from your destiny. You can create your own destiny. But if you live as an ordinary uh, materialist, then you remain under the stringent law of predestination. You can't change it. You remain a slave. Any other question? You had a question? Yeah. Why, why Krishna has to, why Krishna has the need for eating? If he's got need to, for? To eat. If he's got Actually, to eat. Krishna doesn't need to eat at all. He eats simply for enjoyment. He doesn't require eating like you and me. He eats simply for the fun of it. He eats to give you an opportunity to feed him. Because when you feed him, you make spiritual progress. Therefore, even though he doesn't need your feeding him, he will accept your food that you offer him with love so that you can make progress out of this material existence. 
In the spiritual world, he is being uh, eating the food cooked by Srimati Radharani. She is the most expert cook in the whole creation. What we can cook compared to what Radharani can cook. Our cooking cannot compete with her cooking. But yet Krishna kindly accepts our cooking just so that we can make progress back to home, back to God. So you should cook for Krishna and eat the remnants of food that you have cooked for Krishna. This will make you perfect spiritually. Next question. If we have uh, come from the spiritual world because we are uh, we're envious, then why why we have to go through all this cycle of uh, you know, animal? Actually, we started off as high-level human beings when we first entered this material world. You don't didn't have to become animals. We started off as demigods in the heavenly planets. And then we, we could have gone back to Godhead immediately from that position as a demigod. But because we were so lusty for material enjoyment, we wanted to try everything. Well, let me try being a dog, I'll try being a cat, I'll try being this, I'll try being that. So we could have gone back immediately without ever going down to the animal kingdom, but we just had all these lusty desires to try out Try being a dog and try being a monkey and try being a gorilla and all these things. So we went through it so we could get it out of our system. Okay, we got to wrap it up here. I have to catch an early morning flight and all the way up in Varna early in the morning tomorrow. So we have maybe one or two questions more and that's it. Eight, five minutes. To yeah. I see particular inclination in, uh, in myself uh, toward certain service to Krishna, but the devotees they see different. So how I what service do you feel inclined to do? Oh, yes. it's, uh, for me it's uh, very sweet, uh, but uh, sometimes I feel I I must uh, cooking and uh, sometimes. That's very nice. You would like to cook for Krishna. The what? But uh, sometimes I want all the things make uh, for one day, but one day it's uh, 24 hours. And sometimes um, the, the bhakti say to me that uh, I will, I must be stopping the, uh, the cooking and uh, to sleep. But I want, to, I want one day, one year, and I can, um, I, I have um, problem with uh, with time because uh, sometimes uh, I I think I can do all the things and it's um, eight o'clock in the night and I oh you want to do more service but you have to go to sleep service, yes but the morning 
Well, that's that's very good because then that means you're qualifying yourself to get a spiritual body that will never require sleep. You see, if you if your body is, if you have a desire to serve more, but your body is getting in the way, then that's very good. That means you're qualifying yourself to get a spiritual body by your desire of your heart. You will qualify to get a spiritual body. So you you have to take care of this body while you have it. But uh, it's very nice if you want to do more service, more service, more service. So, Hare Krishna. So, yeah, we have to go now, um, so we can uh, get up very early in the morning and catch our flight in in uh, Varna. So we thank you all very much for so nicely participating in our Krishna Conscious movement here in Vurgas. Please take good guidance from these devotees who are here. Uh, make your lives perfect and uh, no more taking breath again this material world. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.